So let's think briefly and at a high level about what all this means. So there's two possibilities in the world, right? The, the universe could be arranged in one of two ways, right? Exactly one of two ways. It could look like this. So here's the class of all NP problems. Uh, and it could be that P is a proper subset of NP, right? So this, this says P is not equal to NP. Or another way to write this is P is a proper subset of NP. What this would mean is that there are problems in NP that, are, that, that we cannot solve in polynomial time, despite the fact that we can, we can, uh, we can um, verify their solutions in polynomial time. Okay, so, so what this, you know, sometimes what you'll see is you'll see um, a set drawn up here labeled NPC, right? So this NPC is the set of NP complete problems. We know there's a bunch of problems, you know, hundreds of problems live in NP, in NP complete. Um, and we know that in, in a sense, you know, in this important sense, they are the hardest problems in NP. So if this is the case, that the, the set of, of problems we can solve fast, right, this, this P set, um, is not equal to all of NP, then it means that P and NP complete are, they are distinct, right? There's no overlap between those two, right? So, so this, is, this is possibility one. So the other way the universe could be arranged is like this, right? We have the set NP, and NP equals P, right? Uh, NP equals P means that, look, we've got, we've got this, we've got the, the set NP overlaid exactly on top of, of P, so P equals NP. And see what that also would imply is that every problem in P is NP complete. Okay, so why why is that, right? Why why would that be? Well, and so there's a, there's some some edge cases that don't actually quite apply to this uh, apply here, but but it, it would mean that things like uh, that things like um, you know the the, the array search problem uh, that that we looked at before would be somehow in some sense um, as hard as the traveling salesperson problem. Um, and so, and so, you know, this is this is one of the kind of the very interesting conundrums in, in theoretical computer science, um, is trying to distinguish between which universe we live in, right? Whether we live in this one on the left, um, where the hard problems are harder <laughs> than the easy problems, or whether we live in this one on the right, where in some sense the hardest problems actually aren't harder than the easiest problems. Okay. So this is, I mean, this is a big question. There's millions of dollars on the line, you know, for solving this question, it, both in terms of prize money, because, you know, you're, you become, you, you win these prizes that people are offering for solving these problems, but also possibly in terms of, uh, you know, actual economic benefit that could accrue from being able to solve these hard problems fast. Um, lo there's lots of interesting incentives in, in either direction uh, for solving these problems. But the, the big question is, which universe do we live in? Right? Do we live in this one, where hard problems uh, are distinct in their hardness from easy problems, or do we live in this one, where there's a bunch of problems that are that are uh, that appear hard that are actually easy? Right. This is this is kind of one uh, one uh, informal way of framing of framing this question, the question of the of p versus np. So this this question, by the way, is called the p versus np question. So this is the the p versus NP. So let's think just briefly about what uh, what kinds of uh, approaches we could take to distinguish between which you know between these two cases of the of the universe. So for example, one one possibility is what if a polynomial time algorithm? Um, let's let's say if a polynomial time algorithm were discovered for some NP complete problem. Okay, so what would that mean? Well, let's let's think about this. So suppose here's our class P, and here's our class NP complete. It's not typically called a class NP complete, but we'll 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 be a little bit informal here. 
so we've got we've got our class P, we've got our class NP complete. What does it mean for a polynomial time algorithm to exist for an NP complete problem? Well, it means that that particular problem is in P. Okay, so it means that this problem would be here. It would be, I mean, it is NP-complete. It's known to be NP-complete. That's not an open question. But if we found a polynomial time algorithm for it, that would prove that it's NP. So now what do we know about the class NP-complete? We know that a polynomial time algorithm for any works as a polynomial time algorithm for all. So what this would say is that actually not just this one problem is in is NP, but every problem, every problem in NP, every NP complete problem is NP. And so let me let me uh, you know use the power of technology here to, to illustrate this. So what this would mean is in fact that the class NP complete is a subset of the class P. All right. So now this is NP complete. All right. This would mean that every NP complete problem has a polynomial time algorithm. Okay. So, so we have this interesting fact that says, and this is really baked into the definition of NP-complete, but we have this interesting fact that says, if we discover that any NP-complete problem is easy, then that means they're all easy. Okay? Uh, so, you know, we can think a little bit about what that means, but if, if any NP-complete problem is easy, then all are. And not all problems, but all NP-complete problems are. Okay, so this is a strange thing to say because we think pretty pretty strongly that NP-complete problems are hard, right? And some some of them seem to be you know they have like a a challenge that's even kind of above and beyond other ones. But you know NP-complete problems do appear to be computationally challenging problems. And people have been trying to find fast algorithms for them for a very, very long time and, and haven't, right? So this has been, a, it's been an active area of research for, for decades. Um, no one's ever made any progress. No one has come close to saying, oh yeah, there's a polynomial time algorithm for one of these. So there's pretty strong evidence that this is false, okay? No, there's pretty strong evidence, pardon me, pretty strong evidence that this is false. Okay, so this is probably false. Okay, so what does it mean if the conclusion of an implication is false? Uh, well, then that means that the the uh, that means that this is probably this is probably false, right? And so that you know if the conclusion is false, that means the the uh, this this would have to be false as well. Okay. Because the implication, you know, this this implication is certainly a true implication. For it to be a true implication, then you know, if the if the conclusion is false, then so is the hypothesis. Okay. So, uh, so what do we have? So, um, so this is this is one kind of way that the the the, the conundrum could be resolved. Um, but but it seems to be a, it seems to be an un, an unlikely thing to happen. Could could happen, right? It's absolutely. Absolutely possible, absolutely possible. So we should think a little bit about what it would take to prove that P and NP are different. So one, one way that we could, we could do this, and th this is hypothetical, right? This proof does not exist. Uh, it's not known how this proof would work. Um, but you know, this, this, if we could show this thing in the bullet point, then this would show us that P and NP are different. It would, it would show us that, indeed, hard problems are hard. So what we what we could do is we could show that some NP complete problem, just any 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 of the 800 or so NP complete problems out there, has no polynomial time algorithm and can never have a polynomial time algorithm. So this would say that there exists at least one problem in NP that is not in P. Okay, what would this what would this say? This would say there exists uh, a problem problem in NP such that the problem is not in P. Okay, uh, so if this problem is NP complete, then that gives us, uh, that gives us everything. Okay, so that, that gives us that there's a, that there's a distinction. Um, because that, that problem 
would have to be it would have to be among the hardest problems in in NP. So so another interesting thing we could do is we could say well what if there's a pro what if we discover for sure that there's a problem here so here's p here's np complete here's np so what if we showed that there exists a problem here what if we find this well what that problem would do is it would say there, this problem does not have polynomial time algorithms. So again, we would have to come up with some argument that there is no polynomial time algorithm for this thing, or no polynomial time reduction to, to a problem in P. Um, and we would have to show that the NP complete problems cannot be reduced to this, right? So those are two big asks. So this is also a, a, a massive challenge that might be very hard to accomplish. But if we found this, this also would show that there's a separation. Right? As soon as we show that there is anything outside of P that is still in NP, then we show that there's a separation. Right? So anytime we show this, that would imply that P is not equal to NP. Right? And if P is not equal to NP, then we have this NP complete distinction. So now here's, here's an interesting question. Right? This is kind of a weird technique for resolving the P versus NP problem. Uh, what, if we, what if we discovered that NP looks like this? Okay, so this is, here's our class NP, and what if we said there's no gap? What if somehow we could prove that there's no gap between P and NP complete? Okay, so this is, this is a, strange, a strange idea. So what if we proved by some unknown means uh, that, that essentially, you know, you're either in P or you're in NP or you're NP complete, but you can't you can't be in neither, right? So that there exists there exists no problem in uh, in NP, or I should say I should say for all problems in NP NP. Uh, the problem is in P or in or NP complete. Is NP complete, or the problem is in P? Okay. So it turns out and this is a very bizarre fact. Uh, it's not at all obvious. It turns out that if you could prove this, then that would actually prove that P equals NP. Okay, so this would prove, here's our fact, and I'm going to offer this to you without proof. I encourage you to go look it up if you're interested. But our fact is um, this would show that P equals NP. Okay, uh, non-trivial, non-trivial fact. Okay, this is not something that I expect you to, to uh, you know, know, know how to... Uh, know how to, to deal with. So here's another question, right? So this is a question that would also resolve it, but it would resolve it in potentially an unsatisfying way. So what if, what if we discover uh, a, a polynomial time reduction, reduction from an NP complete problem, NP complete problem to a P problem? But the, the time complexity of this reduction was like n to the 10 million with time complexity of big data of n to the 10, you know, with a bunch of zeros. Okay. In other words, we, we actually could solve an NP-complete problem, uh, you know, in polynomial time. But the polynomial would be some massive high degree polynomial, right? What would this give us? Well, this would resolve. This would resolve the uh, the p versus np problem, right? So this this would tell us that yeah, indeed, p equals np, because if we can reduce any np complete problem to a problem in p in polynomial time, then then we've got it. I mean, then we've we've just identified that these hard problems actually can be solved by polynomial algorithms. But it would, it would only give us that the best known polynomial algorithm would, ha, would be this, this not very scalable algorithm. Right? It's not an exponential complexity, 
but it's bad. You know, you don't want an algorithm with that level of uh, with that time complexity. Okay, so you'd win the prize, um, but you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't get a very satisfying answer. Um, but what you would do is you would say, hey, there now there exists a way of solving these problems in polynomial time. And most likely, now the rest of the algorithmic community would say would, would latch onto that and, and work on reducing the order of that polynomial. Okay. So you know you you would open a, a, a beautiful can of worms that would be exploited by the rest of the by the rest of the community uh, on, on and on and on. So this has been you know this has been kind of our, our high level overview of the p versus n p problem. Um, we're not going to get into some of the guts that that uh, that we we should, and I encourage you to go explore this stuff on your own. Um, re reach out to me by all means if you think you'd like to have more information about this. Um, but uh, but I, I wanted to make sure that I gave you kind of you know a, a picture of of what's out there, um, and and maybe it'll whet your appetite just a little bit to uh, to go explore this stuff. And certainly, at least, it'll give you kind of the basis for having conversations about this stuff going forward.